Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Eric. And today is a special day. We get to go back to our roots, don't we? We do indeed. As long as Eric and I have been involved in Flight Test, there's also been another multi-rotor aircraft brought to us by a favorite Swede called the Tricopter. The Tricopter. And uh, Tricopters have been pioneered, and I just want to take this moment right now from the very sure. beginning to uh, thank David, because that was the yeah. very first multi-rotor I ever built. And he was the first person that introduced us to multi-rotors, sure. and we do not need to bring that one back again. No, I, one. I've brought that out like every episode. I keep getting Josh's old Tricopter, because it's yeah. so cool. It just keeps coming back. But you know what, they're special, and they're sure. special to flight test, and uh, they're different, aren't they? Yeah, they, indeed. And one of the things that makes a Tricopter different than any other flying platform is the fact that it has a servo driven like thrust vectoring yaw where most other copters are done completely by torque yeah and, and when we talk about torque that's actually where it's spooling up motors or down motors to actually allow it to sure. yaw now the benefit from that is when you have a servo actuating this you get a very aggressive yaw and it's very consistent and yep. and with the three points of, of the motors being there it's almost a swoopiness to it sure and a matter of fact we did a whole uh, q a we can link down to below where we actually talked about quadcopters versus tricopters mm -hmm. the debate goes on and on which one you prefer but they are Different. I think it's a Chevy Ford or an Apple yes. PC yes. debate. But there is a problem. Along with this mechanism here, you have increased points of failure. Sure. And also, with this uh, sticking out the back like a stinger, it likes to break. Yeah, and one of the, f the one of the first things when I built my first tricopter that I noticed was on RC groups and all the forums, a lot of people were very, very intimidated by making or inventing a tricopter tail mechanism. Because yeah. at that time, you had to scratch build something. You, you couldn't just go buy one. Yeah, and we learned so much with our first run of multi-rotor parts. Yeah. Uh, a matter of fact, back when we first started with the store, our product line was a lot of Delaware and a lot of G10, and our tilt was even that way too. Yeah, and I think a 370 motor was like the biggest oh, one the you biggest could put on it. Yeah, and no one puts that unless you're a race quad. And I think even the race quads are mm -hmm. bigger than that now at, at this um, point. But a lot more power, and with more power comes more strength and a more need for strength. Yeah, and uh, things like our, our motor mounts, our Delaware landing gear, and now our very new addition, mm -hmm. the tough tilt. Yeah, is all a solution from your feedback. So one of the biggest things we want people to get in the hobby, and we yeah. want them to have the freedom to crash, and we don't want to have them stressed out that if they do crash, that their tilt mechanism, which is by far the most complicated piece breaks on the tricopter, breaks every time. Breaks every yeah. single time. So we came up with a tough tilt, and at this point, I really want to give a big shout out to uh, Dan Knight. Uh, this, I'm not a 3D graphics guy. Mm -hmm. I got the honor of sitting next to this amazing gentleman and talked to him through the tough tilt, and our goals was to make a direct drive tilt that was not 3D printed. Uh, that would take beating after beating after beating. So we really went the extra mile sure. with lots of changes and different versions. And uh, Dan Knight was instrumental in making this a reality and also helping us to get it to it was actually a molded product. Yeah, now, a lot of them are 3D printed nowadays. And yeah. the, the problem with that is that can be brittle yes. and, and they're not gonna crash well. So being able to move to this type of material just makes it practically yeah. indestructible. Well, and the material is one of the biggest things is it's super strong. And with the 3D materials, you actually have layer after layer of melted plastic mm -hmm. going down. Well, it's just like a grain in the wood. It's gonna break very easily on that yeah. grain, especially when you have cold weather or if God forbid you have vibrations in your prop, it's just slowly gonna rattle apart. Sure. And you don't wanna do that. And also mm -hmm. another thing is, is linkages are really good, but linkages get sloppy. Yeah. And it, a lot of people are trying to direct drive things where they're putting splines in there. Well, there's a problem. There's a patent there's on that. There's a patent that. on that. There's a yeah. patent on it, but also uh, what happens if you have a, a servo that doesn't match up with those splines? Sure. So we didn't want that. We wanted something where you could put many different servos on there. It was direct drive. It would take a beating. And uh, speaking of beatings, we put this thing through the test. Indeed we did.
seems like the oh, that's cool. servo might be jammed. So we're out out a servo, but the, the tilt itself is in one piece, which is cool. Unfortunately, all you got to see was the times we crashed with the camera rolling. Uh, we've had easily twice that because we've been developing this thing for over seven months now. Uh, from your time with Rotor GR1 yeah. and uh, the 3D printed prototypes sure. all the way up till now, um, this thing is just keeps on going. Uh, but you know what? A lot of people have tricopters. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go extreme, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. If we're going to have an extreme example of toughness, we should go extreme on tricopters. Sure. So what did you make? I made this right here. Um, this <laughs> thing. <laughs> you did. That, I just had to bring this back out again. I love the history here at Flight Test. Okay, I'll bring out what I really made. All right, so here's what I made for real. I wanted to put really big motors on it. I wanted to do something that could carry a camera, carry an FPV system, have some ground clearance to put a gimbal on the front of here at yeah. some point. The whole reason I actually started off flying multi-rotors was to carry cameras. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do aerial video and that has been my passion for, I just, yeah, yeah, I can't even say how long. It's been years now. If you guys haven't checked out Eric on the Inspire video and also AP Tips episode, check it out. If you're passionate about AP and you want to learn some stuff, this guy is a wonderful blessing to our crew. And uh, you've been doing a lot, but you design around that, don't you? Yeah, everything I make seems to end up having to carry a camera at some point. So I put a lot of thought into this and I have to admit something. And David Vindestel and I have went round and round about this in a friendly way, obviously. Love you, Dave. I never was actually a tricopter guy. I have always flown you know lots of motors and lots of arms yeah. and to me with carrying camera the more arms there Redundancy. were it, yeah and the safer my equipment right. was but you know I built so many tricopters yeah. through the rotor project and I built a bunch of them now you know you, you've had me build a few <laughs> and so I'm actually starting to to take a liking to it for some of the things that it's really yeah. good at so I, I stuck a nase 32 on here um, the flight controller mount that we've got in the store now that I yeah, developed it has the that. wiring kind of this one is is not as clean of a build because it's not finished yet but then and I designed this camera boom, which will eventually hold a gimbal. It's dampened. This is kind of like the prototype, huh? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is just a concept still, but it has a dampened camera boom. It has a battery tray, um, places to mount your uh, FPV gear, and then a full landing gear to give you ground clearance. Yes. And then the last thing was I am all about symmetry. I love symmetry. And so the prop plane of the front two motors was, you know, X amount of, of inches off. The tough tilt was sitting up higher and yeah. because of the angled arm brackets that I made to kind of stabilize the copter out on a physical level, it seemed like with the tail higher, it was causing me to pitch forward. And that's because your angle arms are Yeah, right. so I designed a drop bracket that could be put on to allow the tough tilt to drop down. And now I was able to get it, you know, all dialed in. Yeah. And it kind of hides the servo and kind of looks yeah. neat. So I, I like that as well. But these are big AP motors. These are actually quadrocopters off the big Sinistar octocopter. And what size prop um, will those swing up to? Because you're will way down. Yeah, propped. this is way down propped. I had 14 inch Zor woodens on here and have flown it a few times. And what and, cell battery do you run with um, this? Right now this is set up for four cell, um, okay. but I can actually run up to a six cell on these motors. Wow. So I'm anxious to try a six cell and to see what that, you know, the torque will do to the tough tilt. Oh, very cool. See if it'll stand up to it. <laughs> very cool. Now you point out one of the key things that a lot of people struggle with tricopters and that's where the tail is up higher. Sure. And the higher this is, the more wobble you get, the more play you get. And you gotta yeah. be really careful. So we try to shave that down as much as possible. It's very low profile. It's actually one of the lowest profiles out there. Um, with exception to the, the the direct ones that go right out the back end, Hobby sure. has a really cool gear reduction one yeah, yeah. Uh, that they have that. So the lower you can get this, the the, the lower the profile you can make it, yeah. uh, the better off you the are. The less of a leverage point you're you going to have on that that yeah. pin going through the middle. And one cool thing is we always get to learn here as we're designing things in the future. We're also prototyping the things on the design to carry it forward. 
And if you haven't noticed with the airplane line, with the multi-rotor line, we want to always build off of something. Sure. We don't want to have just the next new thing. We want to have the next step. Yeah. And uh, you did a great job with that. And I actually love this on your little race quad with the Electro Hub. Yeah, that just to be able to take the Electro Hub and make an AP platform yeah. to turn it into a racer and to make it self-stabilize a little bit more. I'm just, I'm having a ball designing things. And <laughs> it's just part of the, the passion for the hobby. So one of the other things I set this thing up to do more aerobatics right now, because this is kind of, you know, the last couple of weeks has been my first intro to the NACE 32 board, which I am having a blast oh, with. You did a great job. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of uh, studying and uh, Osbjorn and the Oscar Lang, uh, uh, is that a, like his blog post on the forum? Yeah. Just fantastic. If you guys are wondering about the NACE 32, we have a video on setting it up and also with the tricopter build, we do a complete setup with the NACE 32 as well. Yeah. And uh, also we're going to be setting all our values. We now carry electronics on our store. Yeah. And because of that, uh, we're going to have our values for certain electronics coupled with certain control boards. As we build that database, we're going to share it with you. It's going to be flighttest.com slash setups. Yep. So I set this up to do crazy aerobatics. I mean, it'll flip and not even lose altitude. It's awesome. It's so amazing. eventually I want to dial this in a little bit more to be able to have it a little softer control and a little bit more of an AP machine because, you know, as I was saying before, I never really flew a tricopter for AP and I'd kind of like to give that yeah. a go and, and see how they work. So once I can get a gimbal under there, soften up the controls, and actually maybe dive into the Naze's settings um, with uh, profiles. Yes. So look forward to moving moving into the future with that. And as we get more settings from Eric, we'll be posting them as well too, so you guys can have the same experience. All right, so enough about mine. Let's see what you have. <laughs> I wanted to go extreme too, and, and maybe I broke a little bit of rules because it's no longer a track hopper. I owe a very sincere thank you to an amazing gentleman I met at Seth. And that was Matt Hall, and he heads up Simple Copter. Uh, when we were at Ceph, and it was the last trip we made with David, mm -hmm. uh, we were down there having a good cool time. Uh, he was flying the T-Copters, which by the way, I absolutely love. Yeah. And uh, he was sharing with me their concept of the idea of having five motors. And I love that because one thing I really hate is crashing. Yeah. Even though I do it a lot, I love redundancy. <laughs> and the idea of having a five motor platform was really intriguing to me because you have you have more motors working for you. Yeah, and if you're carrying a gimbal, you've obviously spent some money um, yeah. on the gimbal. And so crashing becomes a little less, a little... Uh, you don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, so. and if you guys watch the Inspire review, one thing that really uh, caught me on fire was I'm a cheapskate. I hate spending a lot of money. I wanted a platform that could carry a gimbal mm -hmm. and, and have a, a superb amount of power, uh, but also be a, at a budget. So sure. we needed to develop something. I didn't want to go for six motors. I still wanted the yaw authority of a tricopter and the uh, power of a hex. Yeah. So we kind of compromised, came up with a five motor solution, and this is what I designed here. So how does this work exactly? Because you have a tricopter configuration yep. if you make these disappear. So this is kind of a standard it's, tricopter. It's the exact same as a tricopter. Matter of fact, if you put these over, it's identical. It's completely identical. So then you added these, which I'm going to go out on a limb here. Those are right on the center of gravity. Center of gravity. So when that's picking that up, it's not really changing. So are you flying that still in tricopter mode? It has no changes whatsoever. Okay. Matter of fact, I've even tested this out on the NACE 32 in acro mode with no stabilization and it completely works amazing. Nice. We're flying it right now as a full-blown camera ship. So we have the, uh, the Grapner, you know, load with every channel it can yep and i'm using the vector system which is absolutely phenomenal i haven't done any tuning on the vector whatsoever just defaults just strictly wow. default set it up and the way we do this is we actually wide together the signals so this is running off of one channel this is running off of one channel and this okay. is running off of one channel. So you're still flying it as a tricopter, yeah. but you're lifting at the center of gravity so the motor or so the, the board doesn't really notice. It's just getting some extra lifting help. The board is completely clueless. But now what happens is we have the yaw authority of the tri, but when this powers up, yeah. we're gonna have the lifting power. And when we go to bank, we have two motors working this way. Sure. And the same with pitch. If we're throttling down or pitching forward, this is spooling up, but two motors are spooling down. Okay. So you really have an accelerated. That uh, really locks it in, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Now it does something I don't know how to explain, but it has a very soft feel to it. Okay. Very stable in the air. Uh, it almost wants to uh, self-level itself. And uh, we were flying even on the windiest days and it, and it still kind of keeps itself under control even without any special programming whatsoever. Uh, one thing I'm trying out, I'm really excited about, this is one again, another one of your proof of concept gimbal <laughs> carriers. Sure. And the whole idea as you're talking about was, say you have a GoPro and you have a gimbal and you yeah. have a Mobius, you can actually take this off and slide on different attachments, yep. but then also you can store these separately. Sure. So you, if you have to fold things down, you can take the whole platform on the bottom and swap it from frame to frame to frame. Or if you want to put a static GoPro on there for a little bit more exactly. feel of flight footage, 
footage versus stabilized gimbal well, footage. So. And one thing is, say you go from a gimbal to a GoPro, it's gonna change your CG, and you need to have that be mm. able to shift. So look for this, you're doing an amazing job. Cool, well thank what you. What Eric's coming out, but what it's gonna enable us to do is actually center up and, and have the CG perfect, because one thing you always talk about is symmetry, yep. center of gravity. Balance, all that stuff is so important. So yeah. being able to have the battery tray slide back and forth to adjust for whatever camera you're gonna put on the exactly. front of there. It, or say you have to protrude further forward and you can slide right. the battery back for sure. it. So, uh, Eric's done a lot of amazing things. I can't wait to share that. And also we have some new exciting frames. One thing that we're working on is we're gonna have everything forwards and backwards compatible. So as we come up with new products and new add-ons, it's gonna be able to go from our any copter to any future frame we do in the future. So uh, yeah, this had amazing power. We actually yep. were doing little vertical drag races. Sure. And it had incredible power. It was two to one easily. So one of the things that I wanna to speak to is redundancy. Um, <laughs> yes. Because if this loses a motor, yeah. theoretically, because it's flying as a try and it doesn't know these two are here, yes. this is just extra lifting help, so technically it should fly and we, without we, a motor. We definitely found that out. The uh, other day we were getting the footage for this, and uh, one thing that I'm not very good at is using Loctite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use Loctite. These are recycled motors, and uh, what ended up happening was uh, I lost a motor uh, right here. And it fell off. From about 200 feet. And what we found out for about two seconds is it was actually flying. It was doing pretty good until this motor met this motor. And then this came down in one glorious chunk nice. right into the snow. <laughs> and uh, it was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Not good. Uh, luckily, it only broke the landing gear. And uh, I think it just actually cracked one of the booms. Sure. And we're up and running again. Peter was a great help in doing this, but in the process, I lost the ESC for this. Okay. And uh, just for giggles, we went outside. And tried to fly And it. tried to fly <laughs> it. And here's the, I never expected this. It flew just fine. Now, wow. I, don't, I gotta imagine the vector's compensating, but hands off controls, it was still hovering just as happy as could be. Had no difference in control feeling, which makes me really happy because if you're gonna carry a gimbal on the front, you got a good, probably anywhere from four to 600 bucks invested into that. Oh yeah, definitely. You're gonna have a lot of money in there. Now, if you lose a tail, you're done. You're in trouble. But it's nice knowing that if God forbid you throw something, you have sure. at least a chance to get down. And having redundancy is important when you're carrying a, an expensive gimbal. Oh, no so. doubt. And one of my goals here is we took all the key points of the Inspire and all the exceptional things, and it was exceptional. I really wanted to hate it for $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> I know you, you'll hear me saying through the whole video. Oh yeah. It was so money, but the thing performed. And one of the things I really loved about it was the fact that you didn't have those booms and with hexacopters when you pitch forward and this is looking oftentimes you'll get the shot you're going to get them coming down in now with the combination with this layout and also with your with your landing gear you can really go extreme and you're and not going to see, not see props yeah and be in really good which shape. is important for filming and uh, that's one of my desires i want to start learning about ap filming um i'm not very good at racing i love racing the quads but this is something i wanted to try that i'd be comfortable with the idea of crashing because i know i can fix it and i was really happy to see as of yet like i said we destroyed quite a few servos. Uh, these are dual bearing metal gear servos. The tough still <laughs> still is still on. surviving. <laughs> well, this is super cool looking. Now Peter got in the mix too, didn't? Yeah, he did. He didn't want to be left out. Yeah. He built a tricopter, and it's pretty crazy. It's I have crazy. to say, he's got this here. So you what love those is... rotors, man. <laughs> uh, I don't even know why, but you were doing something weird, so. You know, I forgot I'd do some weird too. <laughs> well, you took our backbone frame and you pushed it to the extreme. Yeah, Josh, maybe do it. Yeah, first <laughs> put tell us Batman what you did on there. Uh, I actually made a little body for it. I intend to fly this thing mostly line of sight, so. Okay. I don't know. I kind of like a cool looking, like sort of body looking thing. It was kind of like almost like an Apache it slash King Crow. You made that on a Dollar Tree phone board. Yeah, and then, you know, if there's enough interest, it might be on the store too. So oh, who knows? Very cool. Now, is mm -hmm. your is your heli carrier flying right now? Uh no. No. These are the motors off no, the heli carrier. No, no. And these are like. Josh won't buy me enough motors, so See, I, I just scalp I'm a cheapskate, so. so what I say is, is Peter, go ahead and try this. Take the mm -hmm. motors off. We can always put it back later. So he's had the motors on and off his heli carrier numerous times. Yeah, and I really don't look forward to putting that seat back on. Cause there's, there's a lot of wires to fish through and all the setup of taking your copters apart. Buy me some more motors. I'll do that. So these are what, 15, 16? What, what size props are these? Uh, these are 15 fives on here. 15 fives. 15 five death machines. How, and how did you even clear that? <laughs> <laughs> It is hilarious. And the servo looks like one of the ones we used to fly in the old days. Yeah, this is not something you guys are going to be able to do, at least very easily. But I, like, hacksaw the top of the tilt off and jam that servo in there. <laughs> uh, if you look here, I have... This this bolt pattern is not con it's not conventional. It's not your 19 by 16 millimeter bolt pattern. Okay. It's something different. I don't know what it is. So I had actually, like, drill this out with the Dremel tool and actually just run the screws in there and get four of them to bite. And it has not let go yet. And how many crashes mm -hmm. have you had on this thing? About five. About five crashes. And I figured most of them are my fault, and also the stripping of the nylon servo arm. 
Right now you can see there's an aluminum server arm on here, but there was nylons on there and this is a lot of gyroscopic force and precession yeah. and all that and it just snapped those those nylon things like nothing. Very so cool. we've had I've I've tested that tough tool out really well. Well, I got to fly this for the first time down in, in Georgia when we went down there a few weeks back when we did the, the, the Frosty Dog at Journal. Yeah. And we were at Crafty Dan's house, and it was like, what was it, one in the morning, I think? Oh, it was something ridiculous. ridiculous. And he was carrying, like, this big, huge disco ball thing that he bought at Walmart. And, like, the props are still barely spinning. It didn't even yeah. try. It just you, picked it right up. And, and roughly, how much weight will each one of these motors lift? Uh, this I think they're rated for about 4 to 5 pounds with rust and 6S. 4 to 5 pounds. I haven't actually got to fly on 6S. So public service announcement right here. Don't ever, ever, ever buy Chinese BECs. You're going to regret them. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I plug the uh, 6S into the 8S rated uh, Chinese BEC. And, and magical pop, smoke. Pop goes, the, uh, pop goes the KK2 board and two of the ESCs. Wow. So I ruined two of my pieces of equipment on this aircraft. So, so I can't fly 6S right now. I'm only on t uh, I'm only got 25 amp 4S controllers, but it's good enough for it. So don't flying. go cheap on BECs. Yeah. You, you'll... Any, anytime yeah. you're doing anything, never ever go cheap yeah. on the BECs. And if you guys are wondering what BEC is, it's a battery eliminator mm -hmm. circuit. It's basically what enables the uh, the unit to use the mm -hmm. uh, uh, power to receiver separate exactly, from yeah. the uh, ESCs, yeah, right? Yeah, because some, some higher end ESCs for like multi-copters, mm -hmm. they're actually called optos and uh, they don't have BECs in them. They're just to save weight and a little bit of cost. If you guys are wondering what a lot of these terms mean, uh, check out our beginner series. If you've never flown before, mm -hmm. check out two videos, the beginner series, and also we did a great video that Alex headed up called How to Fly a Multi-Rotor. If you guys have never done it before, check that video out. And that's one of the really cool things about, you mentioned getting into the hobby. A tricopter, they're super cheap to build. You yeah. can buy three motors and three speed controls and you're not having to spend, you know, if you do a Y6, like the Y6 is probably my favorite frame to fly, yeah. but you have double of everything. And so the expense goes up. So if you're just getting into a multi-rotor, you can get a tough tilt and, and three motors and speed controls and be in the air for, for a really, really cheap price. So we're gonna do something not very typical. We're actually going to have our first warranty product on the store. Oh, that sounds and, terrible. Uh, there's only been one of these. <laughs> there's only been one of these that ever met their demise, and it's because of this guy and a potato uh, gun. You left us all here alone. And someone said we need to test the lifetime possible warranty. We had only six of these things, and he's shoving it into his potato gun. Hey, it fit. It Did fits you the shoot ships. it into a cement block? Yeah, there's yeah. cinder block on it. Check out FT Extra if you guys haven't seen that video. It's pretty humorous, and uh, fortunately, it did show us that you know they can break eventually, but not normally. And uh, in everyday use. If you can manage to break this tough tilt on your journey into learning how to fly, send us back a broken piece. Now it's not for the servo, it's for the tilt, but if you can break it in within two years, send us back the piece, we'll replace it for you. But please, if you're gonna do that, uh, send a picture. Send a picture, we wanna see the crash. Yeah, it, it, it has to be very special. We wanna put it in a special place so we can show Yeah, if it. you can break one of these in a crash, you're doing something that, different. That's making a very aggressive memory. For sure. And we wanna support that. And also, if you guys haven't noticed, the tricopters and everything were pulled from the store for quite a while is because of your feedback. We wanted to give you a good product. We knew this was coming out. If you go to the store now, the complete tricopter kits and also the build video with a complete setup, even for the Dragonfly is gonna be available too. Now we even have motor packs for that available now, yep. right? As yep. well for the tricopter and... Yeah, we put out a survey earlier this year and you guys responded big time. And one of the biggest things you wanted was electronic solutions all in one stop. And we heard that and uh, that is now a reality. And if you go down, you'll actually see the uh, common things. Now we're selling it in quad form. It doesn't hurt because a lot of our platforms go from tri to quad to, to quad this. and sure. Plus now you have a spare, so that's even better. And now you have a spare. So uh, we have the complete build video with our electronics and all the dialogue all the setups so hopefully you can put it together go out have an amazing experience speaking of experiences everyone thinks we never actually go fly when we're done yeah, so like calm. let's actually go fly <laughs> <laughs> guys if you're watching this video uh, the kits and everything is in the store right now yep check it out see you next time see you next time